Hey everyone, what's up? We're back with another episode of Middleweight Training Camp. Today, we're going to be looking at the first southpaw in the series, Sergio Martinez, one of my favorite fighters and someone I have used online to great success. You can watch uh, my placement series. We got lots of good wins with him and a couple of knockouts online, so he's very good online. Already know he's a great tier fighter for online, as well as practicing his southpaw stance. He has probably some of the best southpaw animations, I would say. So let's take a look at him. He's an 89 boxer puncher, 89 vitality, 91 stamina, 90 speed, 87 strength, 89 defense, and 93 heart. So he's got everything you want. His jab is really strong because he's got distance keeper. So he gets increased damage dealt from jabs by 20%. He has a slight decrease on his hooks by 5%. Decreased damage from hooks thrown by 5%. Lightning hands, increased punch speed by 10%. But he has reduced damage of punches thrown by 3%. Not a huge deal. He has increased damage of punches thrown by 10%. So he does more damage on the inside. And he takes reduced damage on the inside. He's kind of like a bigger buffer version of Sean Porter. So we're going to give him a try. I already know I like him. But we're going to go into a little more detailed review of him in this and um, one thing we're going to be able to look at and evaluate in this fight is the ability of using footwork to keep your lead foot on the outside of the opponent. It's much harder when you're two orthodox fighters, but as a southpaw, it's much easier to take advantage of this, or as an orthodox fighter against a southpaw fighter. I believe I'm in uh, ringside dolly as I was practicing it last, so I'm just going to quickly check and make sure I get onto zoomed out as we're finishing the series off and zoomed out. I'm still unsure if I'm going to use zoomed out or ringside dolly in the tournament. I think because it's going to be a lot more technical fighting, we're going to go with zoomed out so we can take advantage of our footwork more. I feel like when you're wanting to fight on the inside and get rough, maybe ringside dolly is a bit better, bit better. But I feel like for technical fighting, zoomed out is probably the way to go. Okay, so first off, the first thing you want to know when you're using um, a southpaw fighter is your controls are going to be opposite if you're on the stick. And anyone who is on this channel, I recommend you learn to use the stick, 100%. You have a much wider punch selection from the stick. And once you get good at it, you can throw them a lot more smoothly and fluidly. So if you're on the stick, your jabs and straights and everything are going to be backwards. So remember, right away, Martinez's blocking is also going to be a little bit different because he has different parts of his body exposed as a southpaw fighter. So everything is a little backwards. So there's a little different skill to using a southpaw in this game. But it's well worth the practice to get good at them. See, I accidentally threw a power, uh, a regular straight there because I was not really used to fighting southpaw for a while. But you can see his hand speed is extremely effective. And we can get some good reduction on our damage and increased output on our damage from fighting on the inside. He has good animations on the outside and inside with all his punches. And if you want, you can switch to orthodox with him and have a very, very powerful lead jab. His uh, power straight isn't quite as good in orthodox, but his jab becomes that much stronger. So depending on the style of fight you're having, you have a lot of options with Martinez. He's, uh, he's definitely one of my favorite fighters and probably the one that I'm most used to. But just because of lately having done this series, I'm not really comfortable on a southpaw right now. But that's something I'm hoping to change with the tournament coming up. So we can uh, have some different flavor in our arsenal than just orthodox fighters. There's one other fighter that I might be using in the tournament that is a uh, southpaw. I'm not going to say who it is. I don't want to spoil it or give it away. But it's someone that you don't see too much of. And it's not one of the ridiculous overrated fighters. So right, right away, we can see Martinez has good hand speed, good blocking. He's not a small fighter. He's got good size to him. And he's quick. See how fast we can light him up with a three-piece there off a counter? I like his body positioning. He doesn't skitter around the ring too fast. Um, I feel like he might have been slowed down. I feel like he used to be like really fast in the ring, but he's not so bad anymore. So that was a good round. Did 8% damage on Canelo, but he recovered 3, and we did that 
for eight, uh, nine percent stamina. So fairly equal trade-off. You can see as we get practice at being conservative and still inflicting damage on the AI, you're going to find it easier to inflict damage on real players because they don't have that reduction in damage. So if you can be conservative and put the AI down, you're going to have a much easier time being conservative and putting people down. So we're being pretty cons uh, good with our blocking here as we get more used to the southpaw block. But remember, we have different openings than an orthodox fighter. So we have to be aware of that and adapt to that. You can totally see how fast his hand speed is. It's just lightning quick. And for his uh, reduction on inside fighting, his damage, I definitely think he's a really, really high tier fighter because he's not just fast. He can, he can sit people down. He's got good combos. Even with the minor reduction he has in damage on his punches, I think if he didn't have that, he'd be absolutely broken. Um, he, he's not as strong as he is in welterweight as he is in middleweight. I feel he's a better middleweight fighter. His power translates better in middleweight. But he is also a welterweight fighter as well. So you can see, if you're watching the bottom of the screen, you can see our footwork. And we're getting the best combos on Canelo when we're keeping our lead foot on the outside of his. Because then we're coming off that... What the heck? We're coming off that center line almost every time. Oh, he got us with a good shot there. And this is a, a tactic you can take advantage of much easier when you're not fighting the same type of uh, stanced fighter as yourself. Very competitive round with 10 seconds left. Okay, so that was a pretty good round. We had him orange there. Burned a little too much stamina. That was 10% stamina. So we need to go a little more conservative these next couple rounds, try to drag him down, get him burning some gas. So let's try to be really conservative and efficient with our punching and let's try to get some uh, blocking practice this round and some defensive practice not just blocking because we're doing more than blocking we're using our footwork our slips our upper body movement all in combination and we're going to make sure we stay just outside of the edge of the pocket we don't want to be too far away so then when we have that good opportunity, we can return a good little couple shots, get back to being conservative and defensive. And always try to throw when your stamina bar is fully charged. I know it's hard, but get practice at it. Your best shots are going to come when your stamina is fully charged. Obviously, you can throw one, two, one, two, three, four, and your bar will go down. But before you really start throwing again, let it come back up. I don't recommend putting together more than like a five-piece combo, six-piece at most, if you can really put it all together. But you don't want to be doing that constantly. One, twos, ones. It's all about strategy and picking the guy apart. And then when you have the right opening, being able to open up. So you obviously want practice at being able to open up and throw combos. It's always going to be beneficial. You want to have that in your arsenal. Because when the opponent gives you the opening, you got to be ready to pounce and take it. So we got hit with a good counter there. Still getting used to our different openings in the southpaw stance, but we're having fairly decent success on the block. Okay, that's the end of the round. Okay, so we were at 81. We went to 73 there. That's 8% eight stam stamina. He's at 82. So we're going to have another conservative round or two and try to get him a little closer to us. Okay. 
Those, those were just a little too short, a little out of the way. You can really see how you and the opponent come off the center line if you're paying attention to the footwork in these videos. And this video is going to be more obvious than the others because of uh, Martinez being in the opposite stance as a southpaw fighter. See, all of that was from coming off the center line. Open up a little bit, but we don't want to do too much of that because, again, we're trying to conserve this round. Back to the center of the ring. He blew a lot of shots there. Okay, we came off the center line and hit him really good there, but we threw a little too many shots. But that's okay, we got him with a good burst. If the opportunity is there, take it. So we might have burnt a little more stamina this round than we had hoped, but we had a good opening to take, so we went for it. Because if that wasn't the AI, we would have definitely had this person in some serious trouble. So he's starting to lean and duck a lot. We could probably start hitting him with some good uppercuts here as we go into the next few rounds. Okay, so we're at 62. It's probably like 8 9% stamina again. He's at 74. So we're dropping a little too fast by letting ourselves go a little too much outside of our strategy zone of conservation for these next few rounds. So we're going to have to implement that here if we want to even our stamina up. Plus he's hitting us with more body shots than normal because the uh, the openings to your body are the ones that are harder to cover as a southpaw. Your head's fairly easy to cover whether you're sta uh, orthodox or southpaw, but your body is the one you really need to get used to when you switch stances. There we go. So it's pretty much the same as an orthodox. It's just opposite. And it's a little screwy for your brain. But once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad. But we're going to take a little more body shots in this fight. Because we're getting used to it again. I used to pretty much only play Martinez online. But when I would play him, I'd play him in orthodox. Because I wasn't good at southpaw. So I've never really put time into practicing a southpaw. But I really recommend everyone does it. Yeah, everyone I knocked out online with Martinez, I did it in orthodox stance. He has a super strong jab when you put him into orthodox. So I feel like we're starting to get a little better success with our jab here, or er, with our uh, blocking. We did take a lot of body shots, but we stopped a good few coming at us. There, he hit us with a bunch of deadly shots at the end of that round. So there are some disadvantages to playing on the stick. Obviously, one of them being the controls being backwards when you're um, punching on an orthodox or southpaw fighter. But the advantage is you get such a wider selection in punches. People say the stick isn't accurate or consistent, but the more time you put into it in practice, you can really put off good combos, accurate combos, and throw the punches you want to throw. Is it more time consuming to learn it? Yeah, probably. But I would say it's worth it 100%. There we go. We opened up with a good combo there. Oh, he rocked us hard there. 
I don't know what caught us. I think we were opened up. And he caught us while we were vulnerable. How did they not go down? Okay, we survived. Let's keep him off of us here. Some good shots land. There's a scoring blow. My blocking in Southpaw probably isn't good enough to be standing on the inside with him, but this is why you practice. I think it's safe to say one of these fighters certainly has a significant speed advantage. You can tell who it is. Let me explain to you about a fast fight. Good shots. Good counter. Oh, we're getting gassed, and he's going to have a lot of stamina still, so this is going to get dangerous. We're going to have to get really smart here. And if he goes to our body while we're this gassed, it's going to be rough. Ooh, he got us with a big shot there. That looked glitchy, too. Couple good counters. Okay, we're at 40, he's at 61. This is where it gets rough. Every time I say this, 20 point, 15 point difference in stamina, it gets rough. And the thing is, remember, all of us can go into this game and fight the AI and spam and power punch and knock it out really easily. That's not what about, that's not what this training is about. It's about forcing yourself to fight the AI technically only and practice certain things and not rely on spam or exploits to beat the AI. Because then you don't learn anything. Doing the same thing over and over, you never learn. How much confidence do you build when your opponents hit you with their best shot and you walk right through? So our best shots are coming when we take advantage of our southpaw stance and we get off that center line from him. Good block there. Put him on the ropes with some footwork and ring generalship. Couple jabs, get out. Counter with the jab. Remember, as a taller fighter, we have a big disadvantage going to the body because we have to lean in. And I just don't feel confident doing that. So we've been avoiding Canelo's body here. If we can get him to shell up and follow up with body shots, that's always the way to do it as the taller fighter. You want the other guy shelling up before you're going to go for his body. Because then it's harder for him to punish you for leaning in. Ooh, he caught us with a weird shot because ours got cancelled out. Ooh, he got us right at the last second of the round. And if you notice, those shots are always coming on the exposed side of the body for the southpaw stance. And that's what I've got to get used to covering up. It's this side here. We're getting everything else covered up pretty good. It's just that one side of our body we need some more practice with. But it's the it's not just the blocking, it's the footwork and positioning that's the opposite as well. Because as I've said in other videos, you gotta step off the center line to really help with the blocking as you're taking shots. Don't just back up backwards. And this footwork is uh, the opposite on a southpaw fighter for avoiding body shots as they're coming in and blocking. Did he just glitch out? Oh yeah, okay. Here we go. Martinez has a really good, fast power hook to the body coming off that left hand. See how much longer that other one takes to wind up? So it's always good to practice and find out what power shots you have that can come out reasonably fast. Power straight to the body. Power jab to the body comes off fast. Power hook to the body. That side of an uppercut comes off slow. That side comes off fast. So it's always good to practice and understand what power punches you have that aren't going to leave you massively open. 
if we remove the body modifier, the power uppercuts to the head are generally really slow. That one's a little faster. So it's again, it's always about what ones are your best options to utilize that are not going to leave you wide open. And now Canel is back. Uh, he's done taking his time out, I guess. So again, Martina is a very good fighter. Probably one of the best southpaws in the game. There's one other that I would rate very highly, but I'm not going to say who it is yet until the tournament. So make sure to tune in for that and subscribe. If we can get over 150 subscribers, I'm going to do my webcam reveal and play and record with my webcam from every other fight on. So let's try to get up to over 150 subscribers. There, now we're getting better at blocking that side of our body. See, it's all about the dance back and forth laterally and making sure we're going to the right side to catch the shots. And on a southpaw fighter, it's going to be backwards. I made him walk into that right. Whoa, what the heck? That was very weird. because I let go of that lean too soon. But we got him cut right on his eye. That's a good cut. I think that big overhand right that we got him with that rocked him was the one that did that. Oh, he just ducked that. Okay, we got his stamina pretty close to ours, and his health is fairly low. We might have a chance to go after him here and get him down. Let's not get overzealous for it, though. We're winning these trades with him for sure. Oh, I leaned into that. That was bad. But that's okay. We got the better of that trade. I'm breaking my own rule of standing still as we're waiting for the shot to come in. See how much more success we have when we move our feet while we're waiting for the block and trying to block the shot. And we have a better opportunity to return offense. Never stand still. It's a thing you will do when you get complacent or you think, oh, this is going to block it for sure. Sometimes it won't, so make sure you're moving. You're always going to have a better shot at absorbing the shot when you're moving. He's completely gassed now too. Oh, that should have put him down. Just dodged that last shot coming at us with a good weave. Okay, we're both low end cap. We got his face exploded on both sides. Oh, 
say that last round was a nightmare. Good little counter just off here. some foot movement. Move, move. Don't stand still. Don't throw when gassed. Make sure we take advantage of that inside fighting bonus when we can. Oh. Oh, there were some good shots we caught him with. Oh, what? Weird. I thought he walked into that right hand. Didn't register for some reason. Keep him off of us for a sec here. Let ourselves recover a bit here. Good counter. Martinez has such a fast right hand or a fast left hand power shot. As soon as his hands comes down, just crack. Ooh, we got him double cut on the left. So yeah, as you can see, Martinez is a very strong fighter. Even if you're not completely familiar with the southpaw stance, it's worth practicing. I promise you that. Get in there and get used to it. I know some fighters suck in southpaw. I know a lot of them have terrible animations. But Martinez is probably one of the best to practice because he feels really good as a southpaw. Oh, we almost got him here, guys. If we can time him into another right hand before he recovers. Oh, that should have been it. What happened there? How do they use this fighter's aggression against them? Just went under that one. There we caught him with it. Oh, he's already starting to recover this. Oh, that should have put him down. He walked right into that and leaned into it on top of that. Oh, come on. Okay, we got to get up and make him pay for that if we got the time. So remember when you're doing this, keep these at the bottom of these bars. Because you can't get them to drop down any faster than they naturally will fall down on their own. So the best thing to do is keep them at the bottom. It's, pr it's hard, it's not easy, but practice it. So why did we get put down there? We were too busy trying to hunt for the knockout and we weren't just doing what we know how to do and letting it come to us. You don't ever want to go after the KO and hunt for it. If it comes to you, take it. There's a fine line of walking, and when you step over it, you'll leave yourself open, and you'll generally a lot of the time get put down or caught. So that was our mistake in that fight, but overall we had a good performance. 49%. Hundred and seventy three blocks, forty six counters. Let's check our punch count. Seventy two, sixty eight, forty three, sixty seven, sixty five, seventy nine, seventy nine, fifty five, seventy, sixty nine, seventy seven, sixty two. So you can see that I've basically got my muscle memory program to remember that punch count and that's pretty much what I'm gonna be throwing every fight, give or take. And I suggest we all practice that going forward. As I hope you can see, Martinez definitely a strong pick in middleweight. Not too sure how he does in welterweight, but he's there to play. Give him a try. Get used to southpaw, and he will do great. He's got a really fast power left. 
coming off of that left hand. Good jab, and he does great in orthodox stance as well. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.